joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Univer Video is your platform for Christian content, and it gives you access to the church meetings of the Universal Church around the world, and they are in English. Even the meetings at the Temple of Solomon that provide live, simultaneous translations to English. All you have to do is sign up. And this is how. Visit www.univervideo.com online or download the application on your mobile device and complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card ready and choose your terms of payment. And before you know it, you'll be up and running. Stay connected to the things of faith during the 21 days fast of Daniel. Look at this field of wheat. It's certainly one of the most beautiful scenes we could ever imagine. But don't fool yourself. In among the wheat, tares are also growing. Can you tell them apart? To the naked eye, it's almost impossible because as they grow, they are identical. This is why in his parable, the Lord Jesus taught his disciples that only time would show the true identity of each one. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. That's when we see the difference. When wheat is ripe with fully formed grains, it bows down with the weight of its grains. But the tares, which are poisonous, produce no grain and do not bow down. Instead, they are clearly seen among the stalks of wheat because they stand up straight. This is the time of separation. The tares are pulled up and the wheat is gathered into the barn. When we look at a crowd of people in a church, everyone appears the same. They all pray, sing, raise their hands in worship, and even speak of the things of God. But only those who are born of the Spirit have fruits of righteousness and bow down, like the wheat, before the will of God. But Christian tares are proud and do not accept discipline. They do not bow down, but stand up straight because they like to appear holy while their inner selves are full of poison. It will always be this way. Wherever there is wheat, there will be tares to confuse, to poison, and if possible, to even cause the wheat to be pulled up and thrown into the fire. Only time will reveal what is inside each one. When we go through battles and deserts, when we are shaken up and even crushed, we reveal who we are inside. If we are wheat, fruit appears and remains. But if we are tares, we will refuse to bow down. Hello, my friends. A very good morning. God bless you all. I was just now watching a testimony of a lady and she said that the bottom of the pit was not the depression, was not the marriage that was not going well. The bottom of the pit for her was when her daughter had an incurable disease, incurable. And because of this infirmity, an incurable one, then she came to the highest level of her pain and her suffering. 
She had problem in her marriage, and upon that, the problem with her daughter. But then, when the problem of the daughter came, and then she hit rock bottom. And then, she was already a Christian, converted, anyway. But when she came to this situation, she had no other alternative but to go to the altar. She placed all her strength, all her strength, on the altar. She didn't see hardship. She gathered all her strength, all her energy, and went to the altar. And when she went to the altar, her daughter, that for months, was in coma. She was between life and death. She didn't recognize the mother, neither the father. She recognized nobody. She was in coma. Then when she went to the altar, her daughter, her daughter, as soon as she arrived in the hospital to see her, she said, Mom, I'm starving. Give me some food. And then the doctors were amazed with the recovery of that girl. Very well. What do I want you, dear friends, to know? Look how interesting. This strength, this power of faith, on moving the hands of God and to bring the answer of our urgent necessity, this is glorious. It's not because you deserve or you are undeserving that you bring or you drag out, if I can put in these words, from the hands of God the answer, the response. I was meditating right about that because people place all their strength to reach a benefit, a blessing, a physical one, a blessing that has an expiry date. The girl is healed, is well, it's great, excellent. The family is very well, praise God. However, it came to my soul, to myself, this thought is exactly this strength that we place to take possession of something extraordinary, like a blessing, like the healing of a daughter, the healing of an infirmity, a pain, a suffering, someone that went jobless, a blessing, a blessing. In the same way, we need to use the same strength to reach the salvation of our soul. That's why Jesus said, what man will give in return for his soul? What's the point of him gaining the entire world and losing his own soul? In other words, what's the point on gathering all the blessings of God? We are in the campaign of Israel. The campaign of Israel is the campaign of miracles, of wonders, of the greatness of God here on earth. Excellent, magnificent. Also, I need that. All of us, we need that. However, the priority that we cannot forget is the conquest of the kingdom of God and its righteousness. Because if there is none of that, so all the conquests on earth will be futile, will be vain. If the temple of Solomon, if before the temple of Solomon, the temple considered by God himself, Jesus went there and honored that temple with his presence. When the disciples said to him, 
Look at the constructions, what a wonder. And Jesus said, indeed. But there will be no stone upon another. So we have always to reason on these terms. Anything that we conquer in this life, anything, no stone will be upon another, but not the soul. The soul, if we go to eternity without the certainty of our salvation, the absolute certainty, conviction of our salvation, and then, dear friends, there's no way around. The soul will remain living and will live in torment throughout the whole eternity. But if the person prioritizes the kingdom of God, and then, if they prioritize, for instance, the receiving of the Holy Spirit, so they will be contemplated with eternity inside of them. The Holy Spirit is the eternity inside of us. Eternity. Don't forget that. If you have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, you are the blessing itself. You are the fountain itself. You are the eternity. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of eternity, is the spirit of resurrection, is the spirit of eternal life. Think about it. I know that in this campaign of Israel, many people will desire to accomplish their dreams, personal projects, but if you still don't have the seal of the Holy Spirit, if you're still not that complete type of person, and then put your strength, all your strength, on receiving the Holy Spirit and God will honor you. Is that okay? God bless you. God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The Helpline Call Center is open 24 hours a day, every day of the week, all year round. If you need help due to a serious problem you may be going through, if you feel that you have nowhere to turn to and desperately need someone to lend a listening ear, then we can help you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, your religion or race. Your call will be answered by someone who genuinely cares about you and have your best interests at heart. We also arrange home visits for the housebounds and hospital visits for anyone in great need of kindly human contact. Whether it is simply information you want or desperately need someone to talk to, we're here for you.